I care too much about him, like, eventually, like, at some point, we're probably not going to be talking anymore, and we're probably going to, we're probably going to break what? up. What? <laughs> and I don't want you to have to. Hold on to- a sec. Let's back it up. Who pre-wrecks a relationship? We need to, we need to talk about I said this. this. I had this at dinner, too. Everyone breaks up at some point. <laughs> All right, bye, guys. I guess I'll just finish the show without you. <laughs> Quiet set today. Let's make a little noise. <laughs> I think the, the the vibes are just sullen, bro. They're downtrodden. You know, everyone everyone's quarantining. Everyone's inside with their loved ones, spending time with their family and whatnot. We're just here doing bullshit podcasts. Welcome back to Impulsive, the number one podcast in the world, and that's facts. And that's Squirtle. You know, I got that um, stuffed animal because I, I have this tattooed next to my penis. Well, and we. You weren't gonna get it, and then I said you should get it for the set. Yeah. It'll be good. It'll be a good little touch. I think he's a good addition. He is. What do you call a uh, strong vodka drink that you serve while you're locked up at your house for coronavirus? Couldn't tell you, Mike. A quarantini. Nice, nice. What do you call a babe who's locked in the house with you? Who's you know your babe? Wish my friend would tell me. I I don't know. Quarantine. Ha. Should we bring the guests on? I feel like just just a bunch of bullshit. Well, hold on just one second. How how you feeling? Uh, not so good to be honest with you. I still haven't gotten my corona test and um <clears throat> I I don't I don't I don't feel great. And I I think you may have gotten me sick. But it, it just an upper respiratory infection, yeah. And a and a dry cough, but that's <laughs> nothing to be worried about, right? <laughs> wow, the audience is quite dismal. It's nice. like a it's like a light rain as an audience. Well, it is. It's it's been raining here in LA, and I like honestly the weather changes my mood. It's a low pressure front, dude. My my vibes are just down. I remember when I lived in Ohio, there was a month where it rained every day straight for the entire time. I was a teenager in high school, and it was the first time I felt legitimately depressed. And as a teenager, like I didn't really even now, I'm, I'm sort of confused on how to like process emotion. But I remember looking out the window in my health class, and I was like, I am. I am sad. I'm chronically sad and I've been sad. Point is this. It's crazy how much weather affects your mood. That's why people in Seattle, they're always... De- well, yeah, like the pre- like downtrodden. So when they listen to a lot of Nirvana and uh, stuff yeah, like that. Sure, sure. There's re- it's, been, it's been raining for about a week now. I haven't felt you know true happiness. There's really only one thing in my life that's making me truly happy right now. <laughs> I was trying to, I was throwing it over to Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, it's actually yeah. our guest on the show. This is, this is a massive episode. Uh, it's long overdue. Guys, she is the most popular adult film star in the world, but she has not shot in three years. She's a sweetheart and happens to be dating and doing my best friend, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Please welcome Lana Rhodes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wow. This is going to be great. I don't think we've ever had a... <laughs> Wow, you guys are really <laughs> eyeing each other up right off, right off the bat, huh? She doesn't want to wear the headphones. How do you feel about that? You're one of, I think, three guests to have not done that. Who were the other ones? Uh, I think Steve-O was one. Yeah, because he was like doing backflips and shit. And putting his balls in between his legs and yeah. Yeah. Um, but why, why don't you want to wear headphones? It always like gives me anxiety. I do Hearing like yourself? Like, no, just like having like... It's You're, like changing my senses, I guess, like putting them over my ears. And it's just like, really, it doesn't feel like, I don't know. It just makes it really, <laughs> I don't know the way. Okay. <laughs> I feel like I could relate. It's almost like you're the first like few shows when I'd put them on. It's almost like you're stuck in your own head. Like it blocks off like you're any like outside noise and you really have to get comfortable like being in your mm, own. Interesting. Yeah. So I also just made that up to make her feel better. <laughs> should, <honest. laughs> should I call you by your stage name or real name? I don't care either. One's fine. I mean, if you Google Lana Rhodes' real name, Amara shows up. I'll call you Lana. I'll call you Lana. All right, Lana. Um, before the podcast started today, you were sitting on one of those love sacks over there with Mike, and I heard you say the following sentence: <clears throat> "My cooter's bleeding." <laughs> Great. So now everyone knows I'm on my period. Oh, well, I was going to ask, like, how are you feeling? At the, Honestly, during yesterday these I had times? some really serious cramps mm. after me and Mike's lovemaking session. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um today i'm feeling fine though you're very you're very vocal about your love making session with mike and i want to definitely dive Wait, into you were the one like a couple days ago like questioning us about our sex life i'm very inquisitive <laughs> yeah, you're very i'm inquisitive. intrigued he knows well, how to ask the right questions well I, 
like like you posted this <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> Got that bomb dick last night. It was true. It was really good. <laughs> but it's crazy because like I know that bomb dick is my friend. And I have a name. <laughs> it's, it's it's just a fascinating dynamic that you do have. And she's got my shirt on in it too, which she she has now claimed as her By shirt. Way, I'm gonna need that back. It's getting washed right now. Yes, please wash it because my dryer's broken. Have you ever been used to uh, a relationship, uh, the intimate part of it being this? Like, I, it's so weird. It's so weird for me. Like I've watched other people go through it. Like. Uh, Banks and Alyssa, mm. your brother, multiple times, you with Chloe. But even, but even, not, especially not me. Even they aren't as vocal about their sex. About life, the sex you know? portion of it. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's been interesting. I kind of, I guess I've kind of looked at it as kind of like just like a fun thing. I'm, I'm so, you know, I'm such an open person. I think both of us are. We're, we're so willing to like exploit our lives for content. How? I don't, I don't think Mike really cares though. Like, for example, Whenever he got his weenie sucked. Um, <laughs> <laughs> She's talking about the infamous okay, cheetos. Don't, yeah. We don't need to talk about yeah, it. Of course. Um, she said that he had a small dick and he was like, babe, can you please tweet that my dick is not small? And I was like, no, this is your problem. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> That's great. That's a. It's like that's almost instant karma. So I would say that Mike almost wants me to tell. Oh, and on the podcast that we did the other day, mm -hmm. he was like, "Babe, go into detail. Tell them how good I am." I did. I'm like, yeah, you did. Oh, this... And like you wanted me to be so graphic, and it's just like I don't talk like that. I, but I it, it was. That? It is very good, babe. It, uh, oh, babe. Wow. What What makes it so great? Oh, see, this is good. This is when you could actually utilize that. That. Non discretion. Like why? why that do, do you want to tell them what I tell you? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. No, you tell them. Nah, you tell it's, them. It's hard if for I me say it, say trust me. Like if that. I say it, I'll be eaten by the audience. You have to Liter say quite it. literally. <laughs> it's so personal, though. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't know if that <laughs> argument applies <laughs> with you. Yeah. I feel I feel shy now, even to post nudes on my Twitter. I was gonna so. ask you about that. So I'm like, I don't know. Like everyone's like, you should be fine just doing anything, but I'm not. I totally get that. And I, when I tell people, when I talk to people about you, I say Amara, who's like his girlfriend and Lana yeah. Rhodes are completely Two different, different people. people. Like, yeah. like truthfully, um, the, the stage, um, name that you have and Lana Rhodes, I, I didn't know what to expect the first time I met you when I brought you into surprise Mike and you're, you're so much more chill and sweet in real life than I would have expected. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Babe, come on. You're usually yapping up a storm. You were on a podcast the other day with us. You talked the whole time. I didn't, you talked the whole time. What? Like, all that you ever want to do is talk about yourself. Oh. <laughs> why did I know why did I know this was gonna turn into a roast session? Do you guys session? want to know something? Mike oh, knows please. Mike knows nothing about me, but I know everything about him. <laughs> so what do you see in him? I mean, he's sweet sometimes. He's sweet a lot of times. A lot of times. Yeah. Besides, whenever I have a problem with something, then he always tells me that there's nothing wrong. And that's what really annoys me about him. What? Like, for example, whenever we went to that restaurant the other day and they upset me talking about my pants, he was like, no, babe, you should agree with them. Like, everything's fine. Like, I, I want him to be more like, yeah, babe, you're right. Like, that give, was give you a up. pat on the butt and be like, you got this, babe. You're right. Yeah. yeah. She just like, wants me to support always, her unconditionally. It's always, it's always my fault. Like I'm everything. sure not I'm sure not always. I think this is I think what you're describing is a relationship. And you guys have to find the balance. Mm -hmm. But both of you, both of you, because if he's making a point that that particular circumstance, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm I wasn't, pretty sure all my boyfriends in the past have been like, Yeah, babe, you're right. Well, of she's course, definitely, of course. she's okay. definitely dated like a lot of <clears throat> more like this is Lana Rhodes. I'm just going to lay down and take whatever she's offering yeah. type guys. Like I, I just tell her wh what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like when she argues with me about dumb shit or what I consider to be dumb shit, I'm like, yo, this is dumb shit. And I'm not willing to have this argument with you. And she's but like, that's, fine, that's, I'm fucking leaving. And we argue for a little bit. And then she leaves. And then she calls me five minutes later and says, babe, I didn't want to leave. I, can I come back now? And I'm like, absolutely. Come on back. But you're driving or paying for your own Uber because I didn't make that fucking stupid you argument. Said, you, happen. Said you would pay for my Uber back and you didn't make that argument happen. What are you trying to do right now? <laughs> <laughs> you all you do all day is literally sit in front of me and tell me how great I am. And then you come on the show just to roast me. <laughs> like, what the <laughs> fuck is happening right now? You couldn't even explain why it's bomb dick. Yeah, what do you... I, I feel like it fits really well. That makes sense. Yeah. Like, it's probably the best feeling one for my vagina that I've had. It's like one of those good... It's a good fit. Yeah. It's a good fit. That's cool. That maybe that means you guys are meant to be. 
Because I'm I'm sitting in between you right now, and to be honest, it doesn't feel like you're a couple. She's <laughs> she's being mean today. I think she takes this route when she tries to like produce like quick comedy, like that she wants to just hit some bangs. It's, it's funny though. Maybe it's just like defensive because I don't want to talk about myself. Like you are the guest of the life. show. I know, I know. Well, no, but she's also, but also <laughs> more than the guest of the show. You know, you're you're part of the family now, and so like it doesn't have to. We can talk about whatever you want. What do you What do you want to talk about? That's interesting. I could give do you, you some do lead you guys offs. Have any questions? Yeah, for, I, have, I have tons. Uh, so you said she's part of the family now, uh, and you are. And it started as a vlog, right? <laughs> like uh -huh. I, it started as a vlog. I brought you in. To surprise my friend Mike with you, and now all of a sudden you're dating him. Yeah, we're dating. That's kind of weird. Yeah, like, it is especially crazy. Especially remember you asked me in the car, you were like, in any way, would you ever like be attracted to Mike mm -hmm. or like Mike? And I was like, no fucking way. You said you don't like white guys. Yeah. Because you used her last husband or and people oh, before that. He was a Syrian. He wasn't white. Right. Mm. It's different. Mm. And I was like the only white guy that you ever... Well, I dated that other white guy. Oh, fuck. Every story I have just collapses under the pressure of truth. <laughs> yeah, I told you this. I'm just kidding. Has it been weird being integrated into our world and like this weird shit that goes on at this house? Mm, I'm not really used to like living like a normal life, I guess. Mm, so it's mm, not mm. like that different for me. That's maybe why you fit in. Like we're all kind of just misfits. You know what's weird too? Remember I told you this before? Like I felt really comfortable with you guys like mm. just off the bat. Like usually I have like really, really bad anxiety like around new people and I won't talk at all. I was so, I, I wanted to do my best to <clears throat> be as respectful as possible. Yeah. Because I know like given your uh, previous line of work, I'm sure people treat you a different way, act a certain way towards you. Even like that uh, situation you were describing at the restaurant. Yeah. Um, which, but can you, do you want to, can you elaborate on that a little I bit? Mean, <laughs> the host is at the restaurant. I don't the host is like... of the restaurant sitting right there. So it's making the conversation difficult. Um, what no, but you just felt... I, f I mean, it might not have been the reason because we found out later <coughs> that there was like another girl yeah. who was wearing like a similar outfit. Like literally like it was black pants with like cutouts. And then, like, the issue was there was too much skin on your butt that was showing. Was that, that's what they were yeah, saying? Yeah, but I mean, these pants were like, there wasn't really anything wrong. Let's look with them, at. Let's look at it. Of, that's sort of why, like, I internal internalized it as like they were discriminating against me because he knew who I was, mm. and I felt like they might have looked different on me than on someone else just because who I was. Mm. But then there was another girl who I don't think is in the same line of work as me, who was wearing a similar outfit, and they told her that she couldn't wear that too, but she thought that it was because the color of her skin. So we Whoa. both. Because, like, both of our outfits weren't bad, so we yeah. felt, like, discriminated against, but I'm yeah. not sure if that was the case. Both of you felt slighted. I mean, who, who knows yeah. if there's, like, actual validity in it, and there, and, and there might though, be. I'm wondering, though, if it's the same guy, and he just was like, they're too hot, they can't be here. They're too hot. <laughs> let's look at, let's look at it as a, let's look at it as a holistic issue, though. She was, like, a, she was a nice that's what, that's girl. Have you, have you dealt with that kind of stuff, like, in other parts of your life, and, like, what has it been like? I feel like we haven't given much context because we brought her in as a friend. Like, yeah. have we talked like to any of the viewers about like when, how, how long were you, how long did you work for? How did you get started? How long did you shoot for? And how long have you been out for? Like, give us like a quick, like 30 second, like context that doesn't hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, well, my favorite performer that I was. <laughs> um, okay. So whenever I turned 19, well, I've been working an adult, like, since I was like 16. Mm. Not Sorry, like, what's that now? Not like porn okay. though, but like I was like dancing from like 16. Like I had like sugar daddies online whenever I was 16. Wait, really? But That's definitely was, not legal. I was still a virgin. Like I never slept with anyone. So you were just hustling? Yeah. Wow. I used to like, to get like my first pair of like stripper shoes, I like found like guys on Craigslist that lived in like different states and like gave them a different name. I don't name. even know these stories, by the way. And I I think like I used the name Danny and I was just talking to them and I'm like. <laughs> 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 and they'd wow. like, I'd like pick out stripper shoes that I wanted and they'd send them to me and then like I'd send the pictures of like my feet in them and I was like 16 and so I got like my first pair of stripper shoes and I went to the strip club. What are stripper shoes? Like, he um, like, like heels? Like the clear like shoes, oh, like the okay. big heels, yeah. And my mom saw them and she was like, what are these for? Yeah. And like she's seen that they're for a different name and she was like really confused. And I was just like, they're for my friend. Wow. Was that was that before or after you were kidnapped by the hippie mafia? Because that <laughs> happened as well, right? Yeah. How, okay, How? so explain that. How old were it was, you? It was like around the same time. 
Right, bef- <laughs> okay. So can you explain you, you were, this? You, you were a troubled teenager, is it safe to say? Or, or you, maybe you just didn't find your way right off the bat? Um, I had like something happened like earlier mm. on and before that I was like a really good kid like I was in cheerleading mm. like I was just like perfect and then I had like this trauma and then I found it like hard to fit in with people and so I found like these other people that were just really accepting of everyone and it was these hippies but they were actually like criminals they weren't real <laughs> hippies oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> hippie, hippie criminals those are the, the worst yeah. kind yeah and then that's whenever like they like put me on to like Stripping, like go get money for no us. Way. Like, oh, that's stuff. how it started. Yeah. Wait, so you were working for them in a way? Yeah, and like they were like doing other stuff, like Tell- get money for everyone. It was like a group effort. <laughs> and what Wait, it was a group it- effort to bring a collective of money to the whole? Yeah, I guess so- it was a gang of hippies. <laughs> so you could do what as the gang? Just like I don't know, just. Probably for them to buy drugs. I don't know. Was the leader I named Charles got, Manson got, by the chance? I never <laughs> got anything out of any of it. Why did you do that? Just because there was a group of people to fit in with? She yeah, was 15. I guess, like, I feel like whenever you're younger, like belonging and having friends is more important than it is whenever you're an adult. Mm. And so then like, I was kind of like my sister. How she's like, I just want to hang out with my friends. <laughs> <laughs> and so that was like my most important thing whenever I was that age was just like having friends, I guess. I don't know. I don't feel like that now. Obviously, I'm like a complete loner. What um? What was the trauma? Do you feel comfortable talking about it? I, I, I probably can't. You I, have, I haven't even told Mike. You don't have to. Oh, really? yeah, yeah. yeah, you don't have to. Um, and then and that eventually led to you being the small person that got put through windows to rob houses at one point. Right. Is that what it was? I've never talked to this oh. on camera. Mike. Well, people don't know you're. Well, people know that I went, so I went to prison for like a year from like 16 to 17 or like almost 18, actually. As a result of that, what I just talked about, right? Yeah. You, and like, you I, were the lookout of this well, they armed sort of, robbery. They <laughs> Clan <say>. of hippies. <laughs> They're like, bump up the Jimi Hendrix, boys. We got a house to rob today. Put the little girl through the window and we'll make out with all the bricks. Yeah. (laughs) Like, what the fuck is going on out there? Yo, imagine me the first time I'm hearing this story. I'm in a new relationship. She's like, well, she's like, before I started doing porn, when I was about 16, I was a house robber with the hippie mafia. And I'm like, sorry, could you just play that back one more fucking time? But it's part of the overall story of me and her because... I said this on on No Jumper and I've said it on a couple other podcasts as well. Her stories, while crazy, are only as crazy as my craziest stories. Do you no, know what I'm even, saying? Not, not even. E- not yeah. even. And so a lot of her like, yo, what the fuck is she talking about? Fits in well with my what the fuck is he talking about? And you end up with these two people who have very troubled pasts, but are now in very, very good places. As yeah. you as you can tell from a business and a financial standpoint, she was able to use the industry for what it was worth for her. And then now she's, she's an Instagram model just like anyone else. And she's got eight and a half million followers and she gets crazy engagement. And she's got a Lamborghini and an R8 and an E63 Mercedes and a Range Rover and two houses and she's crushed it, you know? And so she was able to pick up the pieces of her past and turn it into something that is wilder than most people will ever accomplish in their entire yeah. life. And so it's one of the really attractive things to me about her is just how she was able to flip that. What do you think of that? Thanks, babe. You said it pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to help you because I do. The unfortunate thing, especially when it comes to anxiety or even yeah. just mood, is like there. Sh- some days she will talk a-, a lot, and I don't know if it's the rain or the weather or the set or something, but she's she's being shy today. Well, it's also because we're in- we're interacting on the set of a podcast, not like as friends. Like I'm here to ask you questions that yeah. I kind of already know some of the it's, answers to. <laughs> it's more like the setting too. Like it's like mm. very clinical and like that's mm. what's like giving me anxiety. <laughs> it's also stupid, but the sign, like the Whoa. table. Really? Is it, do we, yeah. not, can we turn this light off? <laughs> no. Is it? Well, is there a chance? No. Like, is there a chance that she's the only person that's mentioned this and we have a cold studio? I mean, it is a very, it's cold or hot in here. no, it's just a very, um, Maybe if Ginger sits next to me. It'll make me feel better. Can, is there like something that I can cuddle with? Like, yeah, I'm gonna give you Kong. Rest, rest in peace, by the way. R.I.P. Kong. I mean, have we have we not thought about this? Is the set uh, uh, intimidating, Dylan? I actually feel all, so much all, better. All now. podcast sets are now. She's holding Kong. Is this why she cuddles you? Is it she's because always, of- she's always cuddling me, constantly? Is he a good cuddler? He's really good. And I saw an impulsive. <clears throat> what the fuck? What is, is that? that? Hold on. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> We got walkies. 
Over. Yeah, receive. I saw it. Over. This is Kilo. This is Kilo, this is Kilo in position eight. Uh, it seems like we've got a compromised liability on the set. Uh, I'm gonna need someone to come in with a test immediately. Get on the Corona kits ASAP. Over. On the way. Over. All right. Cool. Anyway, anyways. What was that cough? Um, yeah, you feeling okay? Because we know Mike had an upper respiratory block and a severe dry cough. But it's not like those are the two main symptoms of a global virus. I'm the one who gave it to him. I think it's passed for both of us. We might have actually had corona earlier on. I'm like, telling you this because y'all are doing missionary Miami. sex. Y'all, Because you're coughing <laughs> in each other's faces this close. We It started in Miami at Jake Paul's fight. That's where it all started. You remember cause... I was super sick and I didn't want to go out? Oh, I do remember that. Yeah. yeah. That's whenever it started for me. And then I gave it to him. And that's what he was sick with like last week. It's crazy to imagine that like within like a week of knowing her that we end up on this like journey to Miami together and we're locked up in a room with you and the girl that you were talking to. I think that's why it worked though. Cause like when you're in a tight space like that with someone, you, you bond very quickly, you know, we had no spending choice. a lot of time together. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like I even walked in on you guys having sex once and I say walked in, but well, we I was had, in the kitchen. We had sex for the first time on that trip. And so, uh, yeah. Tell the story, Logan. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, I was minding my business in the kitchen. You remember this? Oh, yeah, that time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know if I wanted to. The point is, I just like saw you guys, you know, and yeah. it was like the second time. So it was all, it was just like a heated. It was, well, yeah, it was supposed to be an important moment. And you, <laughs> and you saw us and <clears throat> you were very playful about the situation. Honestly, I'm kind of happy that he stopped it because that was before me and Mike were having good sex. And it was just like so awful. Like, yeah. I'm sort of happy that you intruded. We well, got the, off to a bad the, start. There's, dude, I mean, a lot of relationships are like that. It takes like a, a very uh, particular chemistry set to match up during sex. And it sometimes doesn't happen right off the bat. Yeah, the first two times, like, I thought, like, no way I'm going to, like, date this guy or <sighs> keep having sex with him because it was just so, so, so bad. bad. Yeah, I remember. I was like, this is so awkward and, like, horrible. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> we, like, we, like, tried to, like, we, like, tried to, like, not force it, but it was like in shared spaces. Like it was either next to you or next to Riley Reed. And like you she was being, you were being too like, like hyper about it. Like literally the second, the time that you like stopped us, he like, <laughs> he like ripped off his pants. I was like, why are you doing? He's like, and like grab me. Well, because it, it was Mike, like he hadn't had sex ever in his life. Well, in Mike's defense, he was probably pretty fucking excited. Like Lana, you are the number one porn star in the world. I, in the world, I'm sure people come in with expectations for like what you're gonna do and what you're capable of. And I don't do any of that. Like honestly, any of it. The, probably the first few times that you have sex with me as well. Like I'm not gonna be enthusiastic about it or do anything special because I don't like you enough yet. Like for me, the more I'll do during sex depends on how much I like you. Yeah. How do you, how do you, I don't understand. Like, how do you turn that flip on? Like the, the Lana Rhodes that I saw on camera the three years ago, like where, where does that come from? Well, that's just basically like I wanted to be good at my job. Hmm. So like, I'd think of things. What can I say during a scene? How should I act during the really? scene to make this scene better so that it sells better? And so, hmm. you know, I can excel yeah. in my career, I guess. Yeah. But did it feel like, <clears throat> Did you enjoy it? Like, did it um, feel like work? At one point, I think whenever I first started, I think I was like excited, you know, like new career, mm -hmm. this, that. Um, and then there was a point where I was excited about like my fans' reactions to my scenes and stuff, and mm -hmm. like them saying, Oh, you're so good. Like, this was so great. Um, and that made me feel good. But like, sexually, it was like I never felt anything sexually during it. No. Yeah. Interesting. By the way, in my defense, the reason I was so excited, <clears throat> one of the reasons was one, obviously, because of what you said, because of it being her. But two was we were in a room that had no door on it, staying with other with three other people in the fucking room. And I, when I found an opportunity, I was trying to fucking strike quickly. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Hot. Exactly. And then, of course, you walked in in this infamous uh, scene of you interrupting chairs being thrown, strangulation and also a push. I never stop Mike from busting a nut, right? <sighs> yeah, you can't get in the way that of can, that. Uh, yeah, that can, that can get tricky. Anyway. <laughs> now every time like that you call me crazy, like I just think of that because I was like the most over-exaggerated reaction to something. I like, flipped I can, out. I can get away with so much now. 
I don't know if that's true. <laughs> I don't know. But that was like insane. Like, but that was from, also between him and like, I. That was all, and I, I pushed him. Like, I assaulted my friend. Yeah, but even before that, he was so mad. Like, you went from zero to one. No, no, no. He, he was, he was, he went from frustrated to very, very angry because I pushed him. Yeah, like, I think that was that, was, like, that be, mean, it became like two men just going at it. Yeah. I think that was the closest I've been to getting to was actually that you getting guys worst fight. Yeah, yeah, probably. That like, was, I've never seen him like this. So I, I felt like you guys were fighting a lot like on that trip and then now it's like settled down. Close quarters. Yeah. We're living in the same room together. Like, that was guys, that was even, tough. Even like the day before that you guys were like clashing like I don't think people <laughs> understand the balance of being friends, business partners, vlog partners, podcast partners. Like I think people like watch the show turn on and they're like this is their relationship. Like, like you guys, you guys see the tip of the iceberg of what this relationship is. The other 99.9% of it, unfortunately, is underwater. It's like even with us fully exploiting ourselves, like they don't know the daily back and forth of, you yeah. know, problems we're up against, business yeah. things we're up against, yeah. all of the dealings that go on, all of the, all the stuff that I'm, happens. I mean, I'm even uh, weary of that with you two, because like, I don't know anything about your relationship all i know is like i introduce you guys and like i put you guys on the vlog sometimes but every time you're like gone or you disappear or even like when you put her in your content like is it is it weird i don't know just like being uh having more of your life on the internet now because you were you were typically pretty private Besides I mean, the stuff I that besides, normal yeah. people keep private. <laughs> I don't feel like we're sharing anything that intimate, like in the vlogs. Like it's just like our last vlog. You, funny stuff. My last vlog, you said you were trying to jerk my golf at CVS. Oh yeah, that's, yeah. that's funny. It though. was it's, funny. It's not like an intimate detail. Ah, uh, but it did actually happen. I though. have more of a hard time sharing like actual personal stuff. Like that stuff's fine. Like it's not. It is. It's, it's not really amounting to like who I am as a person. You know I, what I mean. I feel like it is the polar opposite for everyone else on really? the planet. I think so. I think so. Oh yeah, absolutely. What? What do you mean? Of course. Well, it is. I have. I have a different perception of like what's <clears throat> socially acceptable, like sexually, like to say and what mm. not to say. Mm. Like the lines, like kind of blurred for me mm. because of like my past. I yep. feel like. Yeah, absolutely. Why did you start doing porn? <laughs> I never know the answer to that question. Really? I just like one day I think I was like 14 <clears throat> and I just like got the idea and I was like I'm going to do that. No way. But <laughs> yeah. surely you were How's that possible? <laughs> weren't you like conscious of w what people would think of it? Like you happened to come out successful. I I feel like I knew that I was going to be though. Like just at 14 I was just like you're going to be like the number one porn star do it. Really? Yeah. Damn, you had that she had she thought yeah, about it the much, same way you did of being the number one entertainer. That's crazy. Yeah, pretty much like everything. Jesus Christ. Wow. Seems like a wild time for a phone call, yeah. Sorry. Pretty much like everything that I knew that I was gonna do with my life whenever I was younger, like happened. Like exactly. Like it's kind of weird. The manifestation. Yeah. I'm just so worried about the people who have like that goal in mind or a, and then it a large like goal a massive happen. goal like that and it does not happen like you got you got, uh, lana you're but they, but you're gotta, a point they, zero 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 one percent when they it, have they have to like know that it's like not gonna happen how like, did you I was, know that I was just, at 14 i was just like yeah, one, i was saying. just like 110 percent sure like my guidance counselor was in school my therapist was like that's not a good idea like you can't do what that. Told, you told wait, them <laughs> wait wait yeah. you said you were still but were you still a virgin at this point yeah i was so it didn't make sense at all like i hadn't even had my first kiss oh, and you wait why did you tell your guidance counselor at school because they're they're like don't you want to focus on school? Like, don't you want to go to college? Like, you're going to be a loser. Like, you're not going to have any money. You're not going to do anything. And I was like, no, I'm going to do this, this, and this. And they're like, well, that's not going to happen. Plus, like, you probably need therapy because who should do porn? Whoa. Yeah. What the fuck? How would you know that you would even... That's... I feel like I'm missing, like, a, a key uh, pocket of your life that would maybe explain a little bit more it's about, probably the thing that she's not talking about probably yeah <laughs> which is which is fine because i've always been intrigued by this and by how how you got to where you mm. were because you also have this like hustler mentality where you quite literally like gamed the fuck out of the system and you still are today 
I don't know. I just wake up every day and like work towards things. So what I though is it? Is it? What are you chasing? Money? Is it? Uh, right now, I'm kind of like, like I was just telling you about this the other day. Like I'm sort of feeling down because mm. I feel like eventually you get to a point where you're like already on a high level, and then it's like, what do I do next? Yeah. And I like having a goal and waking up every day and working towards something, and I just don't have that right now, and it's making me feel a little like down and depressed. What about a goal of just maintaining happiness? Well, I think but she's saying I that think, that think happiness it, comes from yeah, it comes for me. It comes from success and like achieving things. And I mm. feel like if I think too much about <clears throat> happiness, then I'll be more depressed and sad. This this feeling is not uncommon, dude. Like we talk about it all the time. Steve Weatherford talked to, for, for talked about it when he came on our Absolutely. podcast. He, he won the Super Bowl and he was in the locker room and he's like, and then it's over. Well, like, now? What do I do yeah, now? that's it. And, yeah. then, and then he stopped playing football. And start, became a motivational speaker. Tyson Fury won all the championship belts. Won, he was at the top. And it's like, now what? Then it, then he yeah. fell into a massive hole of depression and drugs. Yeah, I honestly think like the climb to get to where you want to be is like the happiest So time. fun, so fun. And then, yeah, and then once you get it, it's just like, you just wake up in the morning and you're like, what's my fucking purpose? Interesting. I told her to pick a new, <clears throat> a new goal because but obviously- But what do I do? Like- Honestly, like the higher you get in your career, just in life, like you have less goals to choose from. And it's like, what is actually a realistic goal? Cause you're, you are you, I mean? are you, uh, do you have any projects you're working on or anything, any endeavors that are undergoing in your life? Nothing that I'm like really excited or like passionate about. You, maybe, maybe, maybe try to get one and advice I for anyone listening as well. Sometimes like it'll just like pop in and mm. I'll be like, okay, that's it. But I haven't had any of those like moments mm. lately. She started shooting some YouTube content. No, it's uh, not for YouTube. It's for Pornhub. Uh, but originally it was going <laughs> <laughs> to. It's like, it's like YouTube content, but then it has sexual. Tell, tell them about it. it. Um, basically, I decided to start shooting some vlogs. Taking Por some inspiration from you guys. <laughs> porn vlogs? Yeah, porn vlogs. And then like I'm mixing like sex in with it. But it's not like it's like it's like her and girls and toys. Like Wait, it's so it's you, all girl so and girl. You're having sex with other women? Um This sounds so bad, but I I'm really like bored of like doing sexual stuff on camera. And so it's mostly I'm inviting young girls who are <laughs> still excited about having sex on camera. <laughs> and then I have them do the flashing and sex on camera and i'm just i just basically direct them really yeah she's like oh my friend she'll like be doing a vlog she'll have <laughs> breakfast she'll take her shower and <laughs> then like some girl will stop by and that they'll be the one that like interacts sexually and so that goes on porn but the thing the thing is is i uh, the other day she had been talking about doing youtube stuff as well and if you look at especially the vlog that i put out if you're watching this on thursday on tuesday two days ago she took over the vlog at one point. It was Welcome to the Lana Show. And I, I I wish I could even, I should pull this up part up because it's so crazy how good she is when she gets rolling. It's just, I think like a lot of oh, people. Oh, I know, out, I know. I think a lot of people out there watching this right now can relate to being uh, shy or or when you first get put onto something to having to feel it out. But she's great on camera. I mean, she's great on, yeah, I don't want to say she's great on camera because most of the people watching this know that, but <laughs> in a different respect. <laughs> It's different whenever I'm recording stuff for your vlog, though. Whenever it comes to like mine, I'm like, oh fuck, what do I do? It's it's so much harder, right? Yeah, it's so much, it's different. So much harder. When I feel like because you overthink it, so it's much. so much. You have to. You're thinking about everything, and yeah. you you sort of have to. Like you think about like the for lighting, me, anyways, the story, the lighting, like yeah. how you're gonna edit it. Because you you did. Uh, I saw Mike show me that cut you did. That jump cut, uh, we threw the clothes at the girl, oh, the and she was all of, all of a sudden yeah. in it. Like it's it's cool that you're like not just uh, point and shoot all the time. Um, and there's actually like a strategy that goes behind it. Uh, does it, is it hard for you to get into relationships? Like, was this hard for you? Mm, I'm pretty much, I'm a relationship person. So mm. I'd say I'm more comfortable in a relationship than not in one. I guess it's just like finding a, finding a, a dude who isn't insecure about your past. Right. I've never had guys not want to like date me because of like the porn thing. I feel like because I'm so different in real life, like they don't even think about me like that once they get to know me. But sometimes it is like, like with my ex, he'd get very upset. Like, so we broke, we were together mm -hmm. before I did porn. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we broke up because he went to prison for a period of time. Um, and then he got out and I had already quit porn. So we got back together. And the first few months were really, really difficult for him. Like, because he, while he was in prison, you were shooting. 
Yeah, but and, he was, and he was telling me sounds horrible. He, he called me on the phone and like he broke up with me though before he went to jail, so oh. he couldn't he couldn't have any say about like me shooting porn or anything. Cause Is there a the chance you just me. spy fucked all those dudes on camera? Because <laughs> he went to jail. Well, he broke he, the way that he broke up with me wasn't nice. So, so. so maybe it's quite possible. Maybe it's your. I think that I, that I felt like fault. I felt like abandoned by him, and so I was just like. Because there was a, I told you that I wanted to do porn whenever I was 14. And then I didn't do it for a while because I was with my ex. And then also everyone was like, you should try going to school and all this stuff. So I tried that first and I tried putting off doing porn. Mm. And so I guess whenever he broke up with me and just like left me, I was like, well, no one cares about me anyway. So I'm just going to go and do this. And uh, then I, yeah. Blessing. <laughs> and I was gonna say and a curse, but like but not I really. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't think it was like a spite thing. It was more like a sad thing. Like he doesn't care about me, so why should I care about myself? And I'm just gonna go do this. But That's, it turned out really well for me. So I think part of the reason maybe also is because you're not shooting anymore. Oh, I, yeah. I mean, right? that's the reason why we're dating. Like if, if, she, if she was still shooting, no, we wouldn't be. We wouldn't be dating. She knows that, and 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 it's and it's that's not me saying like you'll you'll never do porn again. It's. As long as we have a relationship together, she won't be shooting scenes. Do you know what I'm saying? And like, if she if she found that she wanted to shoot scenes and that was more important to her, I would say I would give her my full blessing. Well, I put now at this point, I'd probably be quite upset because I would want to lose her. But like, I want her to be successful and be happy in her life and whatever whatever that is. But um, I think also there's a lot of people, a lot of men maybe watching this show right now or who watch my con t content who have comments to make about her past. When in reality, like given the opportunity, any one of those guys would have would would drop to their fucking knees and wipe her up. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like these are those are empty promises. As as you said, you've never had a, a problem with a guy in the past. Once you show, once you guys have interest in each other, where they say, "Oh, your past or what you're currently doing yeah. affects that." Yeah, I mean, I would understand if I'm still shooting. Like for example, I told you I was talking to that one guy, Tommy, who I really liked, and like I was working on months, like getting him to date me. Like he didn't want to because he was friends with like mm -hmm. my ex. And then come to find out, he had a girlfriend that I didn't know about. But I was like so so close, and like I like worked on him for like months and months, and like he was finally gonna date me, but he still had a girlfriend. So I signed the Brazzers contract, and whenever I did that, I was like. I can't like have him break up with his girlfriend and then like I go and do this. So I sort of like pushed him away because mm. I knew that I'd be fucking up his life if like. Noble. Yeah. If you're going to shoot again. Yeah. And then when we started talking, because this, this is definitely a huge yeah. topic. People that are fans of yours have been waiting for this new browsers con content. Have you talked about this at all? I mean, we talked about it a little bit on. You talked about on, it. On No Jumper, right? <laughs> on No Jumper. She wasn't there for that. But uh but yeah, you, what happened with the Brazzers contra contract? And I mean, what happened there? I don't think that I was ever actually going to do it. I just, I was like breaking up with my husband. Like I was feeling bored in life, kind of like the dancing thing. And they like offered me all this money and like all this stuff. And like, I was just like, this seems like it'll be exciting and offer like a spice to my life. But also because I have that issue with like body fluids and I'm, I just don't really want to have sex with a bunch of like random people, I guess. Yeah, that makes I sense. I don't think I actually would have been able to do it, honestly. She has this strange anxiety that I guess came came about recently. <laughs> <laughs> came about recently of body fluids. Uh, how, but is how is that? I don't, I don't, I don't understand, understand how you went from like being so over comfortable with it and just cool with anything to a point where you are you don't want it anywhere near you now. Because I've because I've seen some of the most disgusting cum shots. Like, what you on, have talked about these? You had one that looked like mashed potatoes. I think you said, yeah. <laughs> no, it was like boogers. And luckily, it didn't land on me. It was a scene with two other girls. <clears throat> it was a VR scene, and we were sitting on like a rock in a pool, and he was supposed to come on our faces. And luckily, it didn't get on me. But I just saw it on the other girls, and I started gagging. You got post traumatic. Yeah, and that was, I think that was the Cum point disorder. where, where I was PTCD. like, I don't PTCD. want to come in my mouth anymore or on my face. And I think I started like dodging it at that point. <laughs> Imagine being the actor, <laughs> the male actor, and like you've always had willing participants. And now you have this like person that's like playing Frogger. They're like, bloop, 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 gotta be faster than that. Just come shots are just shooting all over the place. Missing, missing. And I, I think It's asteroids, bro. You know the game asteroids? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think people started noticing too because they were like, "Why isn't Lana letting it get in her mouth anymore?" Whoa! Yeah, 
Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's his reaction when he quite literally has no idea what the fuck to say. There's something like that. (laughs) Wow, dude. I don't know. Uh, That's crazy. And I'm also (laughs) and I'm also looking over at the one day when our sound our sound guy who monitors what's said on this podcast isn't here to listen, and Danny is just listening to all our our Christian. Sweet, pure virgin Danny. Danny. And this was a great day to have Danny do it, guys. Yeah, Everything right. is just right in her ears. <laughs> Brad did Brad the sound engineer didn't come in because of Corona. Yeah, he's can't scared. believe you're here, Danny. Can't believe you're here, Dylan. He probably yeah. contracted it. <laughs> she flexed. <laughs> She's locked it. She's locked in and clocked in. What about you, Mike? Yeah. How does a guy like you not be insecure? Um, in this relationship. So one thing that's really helped with me, uh, are you, t- are you talking about, like, are you like, talking bro, about like, versus you, like you see the comments, yep. you see the, the kids in the real life asking, yeah. where's Lana? Where's yeah, Lana? Yeah. Not only is she, I'm you're, you're great, right? You yeah. know, I love you. Of course. But she's like, she's the breadwinner. Yep. Yep. She got more clout yep. and she has a notorious past. Fact. These are three things that would terrify most gentlemen. You, you you said it a little bit on Adam 22's podcast, but I, I want to pick your brain a little bit here. Yeah, obviously. I think I think the biggest one is, uh, and I think what you're talking about from Adam's um, podcast is that is regarding my past. Is that which piece you're talking about, or Every, what was it? Everything. I think I think more than anything, the biggest thing is um, is knowing is knowing what's important to her. I know what's important to her, and so like she she has this past. You know, she has this has all the things that happen, but our relationship and what we've built between each other and like the, the care that we give to each other and how we feel about each other, I know is so important to her. And so like, yes, she has every single rapper in her DMS and every single football player across the world and soccer player and basketball player. Yes. Like we, we know that it's been established, but she quite literally deletes the messages in front of me. She's like, you are, you are what I care about. You are the thing that I care about. And you're the thing that gets me off. You know what I'm saying? And so when somebody like her says that to me, like, what am I going to be insecure about? You know what I'm saying? Like, um, just like, it's, it's like, it's like, I think a lot, I think a lot of girls out there can relate to this. So, so, and, and I hope guys that are watching this that feel insecure in the relationship can relate to it as well. Girls don't act like us. They don't act like us. They don't act like guys do. Guys are in a relationship and then they see the next hot piece of ass and they're like, oh my God, like I wish I had those those today and that today and that today. The richest man in the world could hit up whoever's watching this girlfriend right now. And if it's a real one, she won't answer that message because she has a relationship with you. She has a mental connection with you. Women create this strong uh, chemical and, and mental bond to their mates that is unbreakable in, in certain cases. Mm-hmm. And I know in LA yeah. we have, obviously we have, have difficulties with that and people cheat and all that kind of stuff happens. But for the most part, women are, are, um, are, are, are mates. They are, they, they have a lifelong partner gene built into their, their DNA into their code. And so even the way that she loves in the first couple months of this relationship is very indicative of the kind of person she is. She does not care how much money you have, how many touchdowns you threw, how much rap you've put out in the past year. She doesn't give a fuck. She looks at me as the alpha of alphas. Is that true? I mean, I maybe I over to, went to, a little bit, me, but he Mike's the number one guy. That's what the him. alpha is. <laughs> yeah. Let's put her DM on blast. You y'all went y'all went viral because on his vlog right he mentioned like an Australian soccer player with like a hundred plus million followers. No, is it? I don't, I don't know if he was Australian. His, yeah, soccer player with like forty three million followers oh. or something like that. Yeah, and they like they almost found out who they're was still trying. Well, it's, it's no, nailed they, down. They actually guessed like the two wrong ones. Oh, yeah. I think to cause drama because those two were like married, married? or something, so, and this one's single. Ah, uh, so. okay, okay, yeah, okay, that's good. Yeah, but I mean, no, I just I just don't, and I also just like don't. Similarly to her, where um, she thinks about things differently in life, that's how I am too. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I think about things very, very differently uh, versus like what the average person. Like the average person would be like, the average person would be like, oh my god, like she's she's been with all these guys before me. Like how do I measure up? You know what I'm saying? As long as as she's telling me after our sex that it was incredible and that like, and I'm asking her what I can change. She's telling me we're communicating. I have no, I have no issues whatsoever with that. You know what I'm saying? And so 
Um, I think everybody has a past and everybody has been through stuff. And I guess, I guess I'm just, it's easier for me to get past that kind of stuff and to just live in the now. And what I see in the now is a very, very sweet girl who's driven and beautiful and focused and hilarious. And I love spending time with her. And that's, that's what I see. And that's what I have. Damn. Let's hope you don't fuck it up. eh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I sent you a, I sent you a video of what she's like when she, when she turns on, I just want Wait, what? Yeah. Mike, you sent him a video of my porn? No, 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 no. <laughs> wrong, wrong well, turn wrong on. Turn on. <laughs> yeah, go go back just a little. Uh, here, let me go. <laughs> That'd be awful. I feel like everyone just watch her get gangbang now. <laughs> oh my god. Right now here in a pulse? <laughs> no, that's not healthy. Coronavirus. Oh, I see. Can I have one of these drinks? Yeah. Yeah. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your favorite stepsister, Lana Rose, and this is the Lana Shift. Right now, I'm with my filthy rich boyfriend driving in his Lamborghini. We're about to go to Saks Fifth Avenue and buy a bunch of shoes for me on his credit card. None of that's true, except for the fact that I'm driving the car. Do I want to ask you any questions? How do you feel about me, babe? Um, I think you're a very, very, very sweet girl. Guys, Absolutely. at what point in a relationship, like how many months in, do you say I love you? Can you, you guys are like Bonnie and Clyde. I'm just going to say it. I know. Outlaws. Driving away in a Lambo. Look at the little thing that he made me. The Lana shift? For his, for his Yeah, channel. it's mad but, cute, man. I'm happy for y'all, but also, <laughs> fuck y'all. What picture is, is that the new picture that I, I didn't, I didn't make that, the editor did. But, but do you see how she can, like, when she gets comfortable, yeah, like, from a, sure. from a dialogue standpoint and a vlog standpoint, like, if you did that on your vlogs, like, you would get millions of views. It's just so much harder when you're doing it for, like, yourself, like, what we're talking about. Can you stay close to that mic, babe? I can try. Thanks. <laughs> I told you guys I was going to be really bad at this. No, you're you're fine. That's the infamous Riley Reed mic, by the way. Oh, really? Yeah, that she deep throated. Should I see who can put it down further? Absolutely <laughs> not. Not. Well, no. But first of all, because I don't care. For this, imagine being this conflicted right now. No, you. you first of all, I don't. I don't think it's sanitary to do so. Not not yeah, these probably times. Not during nope. these times. Nope. Somebody was just talking. To I'm, it. I'm just very competitive and. I kind of want to see. <laughs> I'm gonna sit this. I'm gonna sit this one out. It. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> I don't know. She did get pretty far. <laughs> <laughs> did she get the whole thing? No, no. I think I could do the whole thing. I don't think you could. Probably not. I mean, we could bring. Do you want to bring this upstairs later and just see, like, <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it record it via <laughs> oh. <laughs> for personal knowledge whether or not you could do it. <laughs> we could also sanitize it. Riley went like this when she did. She was like, oh. Didn't she, oh. Like, didn't she like hold her mouth open? <laughs> I don't know. She had a technique, though. I have a, I feel like I have a bigger mouth than Riley, though. Probably. Like, my whole head's bigger than her head. How weird is it when there's, like, <laughs> when, when you're talking to a porn star, when there's, like, or ex-porn star, there's feelings involved. Like, she's, like, your little sister and my girlfriend. And, like, you talk to her about this kind of stuff, and you're just, like. It, you're like, please don't she's like, she's like be my mouth is, is much bigger than Riley's. I'm like, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, I'm just like this. Oh, Normally, like if a, if a, if like her like kiss her when they were on the show, I'm like, yeah, why don't you fucking show the fucking audience? Eh? And now I'm just like, I'm like, I hope she fucking stops soon. <laughs> that's crazy. I was gonna ask you this because you mentioned this in a vlog before that you don't like fast sex. Right, that's what made the like first super, two super times rhythmic, so bad. speedy sex. <laughs> what does make a guy good at sex? Um, well, with Mike, he actually does like every time that we have sex, like every single type of stroke. Like he doesn't just do one. So <laughs> I, I get, would like, not everything. have guessed this. Is it because you care? I think it's be. I hate to say this, but I think it's because of I've been at it for a long time. I th experience over, experience yeah, like, is everything. Like I, is, that kind of grosses me out. Like whenever I think about it, like. <laughs> <laughs> Like, well, that's the sometimes I think like, why is he so good at sex? And I'm like, fuck, it's because he's fuck so many girls. Oh no. <laughs> well, that's also been the other kind of savior, and this is the thing I talked about on Adam. That's been the other savior for us. Like, if I was like some like, if I was Dan the male Danny coming into this relationship, some simp guy that's like trying to figure out like, no, no, no I just mean, a, I just mean, a, all I mean is a virgin, just a virgin, just a virgin. That's all I mean. I don't. Sorry, I don't know how that came out. But if I, but if I was just like a, if I was like a, a virgin, like simp dude who came into the relationship never having sex before, and just like I'm okay with the fact that you've done all that stuff, babe. I'm, no, I think it takes a uh, an experienced cowboy to wrangle the stallion. That's not what I mean either. That's oh. not what I mean either. All I mean is like my past is is fucked too. It just doesn't happen to be on camera. Do you know what I'm saying? And so yeah, like except I, that one time with the VCR. 
That's true. That we talked about on the show before. But like, but like, I think another another thing you could speak to it more. But I think another thing that makes a good lover too, and maybe you could attest to it as well, is the details. Are you, like even as much as like cradling a girl's head when you're in missionary and she doesn't have anything to put her head on for some reason, like the pillow moves, you know what I'm saying? Like certain like little moves, like are the details that come along with experience. You know, what's helped me a lot is my wrestling background. Really? Yeah. Dead ass. <laughs> this is the most dead amazing serious. thing I've ever heard. Dead serious. <laughs> yeah. Just like, I know how to like manipulate bodies and like, I'm always aware of where all your like limbs are and where your head is. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My dad was almost a professional wrestler. Uh, like WWE? No, like wrestling, wrestling, like real wrestling. What do you mean? That, isn't that fake wrestling? No, no, it's real. But like, yeah, I, yeah, like Olympics, like really? Oh, wrestling. Shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Both my parents were pre-Olympic. Were you athletic? So I'm, yeah, super I'm really athletic. athletic yeah. yeah. I take back what I said about your babies, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm not talking about this. No, nah, yeah, I really do. Was, yeah, we should just go somewhere Logan, else. Logan, he was pretty upset when we got home. I, I was upset with myself. He was like, Logan said he was that me and Lana would have ugly babies. All night. <laughs> he was like, you get, he, well, more, more than anything, he was not even bringing her into it. Basically, he was just saying, Mike is going to have <laughs> ugly babies. <laughs> Which was, and, it, and at first, like, we joke really hard that's, at each that's other. It's not the first time he said something like that, though. Like, one time we were sitting on the love sex, and Logan was like, you don't want to have kids with him. Like, you should have kids with me. You said that one time. <gasps> or you said something like that. Oh, something along those lines. Was there I, anyone I, else I, there? I or was it to, just I you two? You say this verbatim, otherwise. I don't. Re I don't remember like exactly. I what didn't you tell said. you you but should I, have I kids with me. <laughs> what the fuck? She goes something like that. Like what? <laughs> I need you to verbatim try to say what I said. That's whenever I told you like that our kids would look like um, albino mice. I don't. I think you were. I don't remember exactly. Could what it you have? Said. Could but it we have? We were talking about like from a sperm donor point of view, not like me and Logan. Like oh oh wait, I think yeah. it was because um. I forgot. You said you didn't want a kid. You did want a kid, and I said I'll donate my sperm yeah, to because yeah. she's you guys talked a kid. about that it because you know she it. wants to use a surrogate. Yeah, that was it. That was it. Mm. Anyways, do you <laughs> do you uh, do you want to talk about the surrogate situation at all? Like, not why, but like you, you want. She wants to have a, a carrier for her child. She doesn't want to have an extra child. She wants to. That's what Kim and Kanye do. Re oh, really? Yeah, and yep. most of the time, what David doesn't realize, because he was roasting me for saying that I want to use a surrogate and a sperm donor, a lot of people who use surrogates, it's because they can't have kids naturally. Or they have can some you sort go? of medical can condition. You? I'm not sure. I've had, because I was trying to have a baby with my ex-husband, and I did have a miscarriage. So I'm not sure. That's completely valid. And uh, I wasn't really looking to use a surrogate until after that happened. So, David, you should feel very bad about your <laughs> comments that you made. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I thrive in chaos and calamity. Fucking. And the excitement. Talking on set. Yeah, it was me, and I apologize over it. This is Kilo. We we do confirm. We have a cough on deck. Uh, I'm gonna need a negative pressure outlet of this room in the next 35 minutes, please. Over. Negative pressure outlet happening now. Over. Back to the podcast. Over. <laughs> Designer babies. <laughs> David has a problem with designer babies. <laughs> David wants babies that are born out of love. I agree with him. I do. I really do. But I believe that the route we are going down is closer and closer to a place where designer babies are more accepted. Uh, we, we've been talking about this for years. I bet you by 2035, 2040, people are, there's more designer babies, you know, coming to fruition. People want the certain color skin. They want the certain color eyes. They want but the it, right it's, brain. It's, it's not just about that. Whenever you make a baby chemically through the lab, like with an egg, test tube. could be your egg. Yeah, lab, test, tube baby. lab test baby. Tube baby. <laughs> um, they can test the egg for certain genetics, like mental sure. disorders, yeah, absolutely. And stuff yeah, genetic like that. engineering. So yeah. yeah, so I could make sure that my baby doesn't have schizophrenia, like my sister, because mm. growing up and seeing that, like it was really, really hard for me and my mom. So I honestly wouldn't want to raise a kid with that because it's very, um, it's very hectic. Even like my mom's still babysitting her to this day. So it's important to me, like, not to end up in that situation. For sure, I think there's a. The buttload of uh, complications that come in 2020 nowadays are anyways with uh, test two babies. I, so I've heard. Really? Just, like yeah, what? still. Yeah. Just like they come out. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's not a natural way of yeah. conception. Why uh, do you think they come out as like 
psychopaths? No, 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 no. I just know there's there can be a lot of health complications should something not go right in the test tube that is incubating your child. Have right? you been doing a lot of research in this? We, we've I, watched I a mean, couple we, shows. We've, I've also like there is a documentary on Netflix about it. Actually, we documentary. Do you want to talk about that? You, you, <gasps> that she leaves the Ara. The for, for everyone listening, we know that she says whenever when she should be saying when, when. <laughs> and she says she calls them documentaries. The A, it's like the A just didn't, She, she becomes exist. British and she says documentary. Documentary. Here's my question. In the documentary you're talking about, it's called, uh, we, watched we watched it. it. Yeah, what was it called again, mate? It was the, <laughs> uh, it was part of like a series. Yeah. It was a series, full part series. I can't remember. Yeah. I watched it out in the garage that time. Uh, anyways, <laughs> um, here's my question. Empl- yeah. It's called, uh. Unnatural selection. We talked yeah. about it on the show before. Here's my question. Employees are imperfect. Employees, as you know better than anyone, employees are imperfect, oh, yeah. right? The people that are doing lab and designer babies are, at the end of the day, employees. What stops said employee from accidentally putting the genome for lettuce into your kid's <laughs> armhole? And now your kid comes out and he has a cabbage, a cabbage as an arm. Do you know what I'm saying? Like that kind of shit doesn't happen when it's sperm to egg. That only happens when they take the like genome three to whole four. It, it does sometimes accidentally put the cabbage in, bro, or like kale. Well, I, what if your baby has toes made of kale? Well, <laughs> Can you fucking physical, imagine that shit? Or a like, fish head? If it's a physical thing, they would be able to tell early on, and they would obviously like. So like your cabbage armed baby just gets sliced and diced. Nah, you put him at Madame Mademoiselle's <laughs> wax Madame Tussauds. Museum. Madame wax. Tussauds wax museum. To live the one cabbage the baby. <laughs> like David, what do you think about that? <laughs> yeah, we're so far off track now. Yo, you ever gonna shoot porn again? David's a big family man. You ever gonna shoot porn again? No. Really? Because I heard you're trying to drag my friend into your <laughs> OnlyFans. <laughs> And I won't let him do it. Like his hand, maybe. Unacceptable. Like more than that. Has your hand been in OnlyFans? No. No. One time, I, one time I asked him to use his hands in my video, but <laughs> he said no. Is that ever going to change? Are you ever going to break? Don't do it, Mike. No, I don't I don't want him to because I don't want... I care too much about him. Like, eventually, like at some point, we're probably not going to be talking anymore and we're probably going to... We're probably going to break what? up. <laughs> and I don't want you to have to. Hold on to- a sec. Let's back it up. Who pre-wrecks a relationship? We need to, we need to talk about I said this. this. I had this at dinner too. Everyone breaks up at some point. <laughs> All right. Bye, guys. I guess I'll just finish the show without you. Yeah. Take over. <laughs> Take over the lot of shit. So, guys, you can sign up on my OnlyFans. <laughs> yes. She's She's sharp. Why would you say that? Babe, how long do we have left? Am I at risk today? <laughs> No, babe. I said this because the point that David had is why wouldn't you have a baby with someone that you love? And my you don't love me. No. Oh, you don't love. Wait. The show is just tumbling down around. No. My point was, what's the percent of people that get divorced? Like fifty-five. Yeah, no one really stays together forever. So at some point, like you're not no one. Half, half. No, wait. Yeah. I bet you it's higher now. But it's it's they, lower, lower, lower. Are they really yeah, happy? Yeah, people getting smarter. Are they really happy? When Probably not. Force themselves Probably to not. Stay <laughs> so whenever it gets to that point where you're not happy in a relationship, I think that you should leave. Well, you've had the luxury, and I've had this too, uh, of kind of being able to do whatever the fuck you want when you want. Yeah. And the moment, and I can probably relate to you here, the moment I get uncomfortable with something, I have the a privilege to be able to cut the cord. Yeah. But there's like something noble about staying in a relationship well, and making it work. With like my ex husband, like probably for like half of like the last year that we were together, I really didn't want to be with him anymore. And I told him that. But like I stayed just to make him happy because I. Did you guys that, go to uh, couples therapy? Um, no, I don't think that we did. But I'm talking we, about making a true effort. No, we really did. Well, I made a true effort. He was still really happy in the relationship. Mm. And I tried to stay for a really long time just because I knew if I left, it was going to lower his sperm count. No, his um, chance of beating coronavirus. No. Cabbage arm disorder. See, no. See it's 40, getting better. 45% of marriages in the United States today ended divorce. But to her point, 60% of second marriages end in divorce. <sighs> you think they'd get it right the second and so time. You're, and so you're absolutely right. There's a good chance... And I'll be 
and spanking you said my dank also, by myself. What I think is gonna happen is Mike said that he doesn't want to get married ever and he doesn't want to have kids ever. So what I think is gonna happen is that I'm gonna want to do those things and he's not going to want to, and that's when we're gonna like well, part ways. Amar, he's lying about both those things. All right. <laughs> he also said he'd never be in a relationship, and I really I've never seen him like this ever. <laughs> he, the day he came to me, and this was sort of I'm actually not gonna no, say. No, you can say it. Well, oh was, yeah, not when. Yeah. He came to me and he he was like, Hey man. I think uh, I think she's finally like crossed that line. I was like, she broke through the wall. I go, I go. What do you mean, Mike? You and I. Oh. And I was like, what do you Wait, mean? Wait, was it recently? No, no, no. When was it? Well, I can't say. <laughs> it. No. Tell me. No, because one makes him look too desperate. One makes him look like a dickhead. Was it like yesterday? <laughs> No, it wasn't. No, I, not, I can't say. But but in all, but here instead of the was time it this morning. No, no, no. The point is you broke you've broken in and oh. like I've lost my friend, so I'm gonna need him back soon. You, you broke in. You can't have him back, Logan. Mm, that's yeah. It's not gonna and work. It's just gonna so. get worse for you. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm slowly dragging him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Hey, hey. <laughs> yeah, we'll see about that. We'll fucking see about that. You you uh she had to drag me kicking and screaming, dude. And in, in, in at first, at least. Hey, babe, you're a liar. Like, on Impulsive, the other day, you said that you don't like cuddling. Like, he's like the biggest cuddle bike. That is not true. I <laughs> do not. not. I say I say to her, here's what I say. Before bed, before we go to sleep at night, she tries to she tries to face to face cuddle me, which you, for you like for like sleeping. And, and then, then I say to her, do you put her head right here? No. So she does that, and I always get hot. And I also there's like a lot of breathing and yeah, all obviously breathing. potential virus risk. Virus. And also worst case scenario, you have like potentially someone looking at you while you're sleeping, which obviously is the scariest thing in the entire world. There's nothing scarier. And so I always say the same line to her. <laughs> I say, assume the position. That's what I say to her, and that means flip over. Facing away from me, yeah, a spoon, and I'll give you the arm. Yeah, and I give her the arm, <laughs> and then as soon as I hear this, <laughs> wait, but then you end up turning over, and then I, like, and then I flip to the other way, and then she tries to spoon me in the middle of the and night. It's the best ever. Like, but I'm not a huge ever. cuddler. But one thing I will say about her, also, is she. she over the past month, are you sending a fucking novel to Charles Emerson? What the fuck are I'm, you doing right now? Note, writing a note. You know, I write notes. One. one uh, the other thing he's like must get rid of Lana Ooh, must kill Lana <laughs> <laughs> nah nah I wasn't doing that the other thing she's done too is had some high profile freakouts when we've woken up when she's woken up in the middle of the night I heard you started screaming one night you had a nightmare huh oh cause he was like babe can you move over it was whenever we first started dating whenever, whenever. huh the whole any time <laughs> you can't you, whenever 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 <laughs> the first Whenever is a broad spectrum. When we yes. first started dating Logan, Paul. I'm, I'm gonna help you. Um, I guess he was like, "Babe, can you move over?" And I just started screaming. I thought that I was sleeping next to like a scary person. Jeffrey Dahmer. In many ways, shit. in many ways, it's, you are sleeping next <laughs> to a scary, a scary person. person. About, Why do you say that? Just like my, look. you know, one of his ex girlfriends told me. She like came to my show in New York. I guess it wasn't his ex-girlfriend, but it was a girl that he used to talk to that grew up with him. And she just kind of followed me around the club the whole night saying, Mike's a sociopath. I can't believe he likes you so much. You should have asked her what that word meant. And you know what she would have said? You know what she would have said? She bounced back and forth between sociopath and psychopath. Do you, do you know what she would have said if you asked what? her what the word meant? <laughs> no one knows what that fucking word means. And, and, Somebody and, who studies any sociology. Normal, any normal human should not be diagnosing people sociopath. Like, there's a sociopathic spectrum, every single human somewhere on it. Some people are zero, some people are a hundred. She also woke me up the like other sometimes night. Sometimes I'm definitely more sociopathic. Than welcome others. to welcome to yeah, welcome yeah. to humanity. Like everyone changes every day. Anyway, what? She also woke me up the other night. Uh we got in a fight at like what time we get? Oh, she was trying to leave the house at 4.30 a.m. because she was telling me that I don't really like her. Wait, we got in a fight. We got <laughs> she, she woke me. I look up. I look up next to my bed and she goes, part. and she goes, babe, I can't get out the front door. I'm like, probably because you're not supposed to be at the front door because it's 4.30 a.m. and you're supposed to be sleeping right fucking there. So what are you doing? She's like, I want to leave. You don't like me and I know it. And I'm like, babe, slow the fuck down. I like you a lot. I'd like you even more if you're right here fucking sleeping right now. And she's like, I got to get out of here. So finally I convince her. I'm like, listen, I don't know what you're feeling. We, we talked about. She gets back in bed. Then, of course, you have the breakup. What happens next? The makeup sex. So now it's 4.45 a.m. I'm looking at the watch. <laughs> fucking hey, I got to get up and fucking like, what the fuck? So I finish. 
about uh, an hour later, she she starts she wakes me up out of a sound sleep and she's like, bugs, 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 they're everywhere. <laughs> you gave, and I'm like, what the fuck is going on with this chick right now? You gave dude? me those worms. I gave her CBD worms, and I think she they're 3,500 milligrams. You should, uh, she, a person her size should probably take a half. She's like, two. babe, can I take two or three of these? I'm like, if you want to have fucking lucid dreams, yeah, go for it. And, and she I, started ranting about bugs. bugs. No. <laughs> and I was like, babe, there's weird bugs over here. And then I realized that there weren't bugs. And at that point, like, I already thought that, like, I, like, fucked up from, like, basically, yeah. like, keeping my boyfriend <laughs> up all night <laughs> and throwing a tantrum at 5 a.m. And then I wake up and have, like, a... Thanks, it I seems like a schizophrenic episode. <laughs> Guys, please well, help me. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like, shit, I really fucked up. He's going to break up with me. <laughs> I hear a lot of stories uh, about your guys' relationship that makes me really want to be in a relationship. And then it's stories like that where I'm so happy that I'm not. <laughs> They're just little things. And, and you look past them and you say, you know, like, babe, like, I don't know what you're going through last night, but we worked past. I mean, there, there was one time where... I took a, a, a edible, I think, or like a CBD that had like THC in it or some shit. And I was laying on the bed and I couldn't get out, it out of my mind that I thought that if she smiled at me, she would have corn as teeth. <laughs> and it became a massive fear of mine. I'm like, I know as soon as she opens her mouth, she's going to have corn as teeth, rows of <laughs> corn on the cob as teeth. And, and, and then later on that night, she was giving me head and I, and I couldn't stop thinking that she was giving me head with corn teeth and I couldn't come because I was, because I kept thinking like if there's enough friction, one of her teeth was going to pop into popcorn. <laughs> also, you were just saying a lot of weird things that night and he wouldn't stop talking all night. You don't say. <laughs> and, you know what, and you know what her first thought was? Oh, he's clearly really going through it right now. I should fuck with him. And she goes, she's like, she's like, babe, oh my God. What the fuck is on your face right now? And I'm like, what? I'm like, what? Why are you doing this? If you're fucking with me, please stop. And she's like, I'm not fucking with you. Something is on your face right now. It's growing. And and I told her, I was like, what if you did that to me? And I immediately ran and jumped out the window off the second story. I just ran and jumped through the glass out the window. What would you have done? And that's why you have to think before you do those jokes to, to people that are maybe not 100% mentally stable, like myself. I've done this to David before. Remember he smokes a lot. Yeah, I was like, I was like, did it work? Dude, I feel like you're. Sh I, was like, Dude, I feel like you're, you're sharp. Then David's, David's Dude, hyper he, conscious and just like aware of everything. I think he almost fell for it. He almost fell for it. Yeah. <laughs> I see I he's shaking like, his head. No, I, like, I don't. Dave, why did you do it's that? It's tough to get Dave, you're dude. Tripping. Dave, <laughs> dude, I, as you're, a, you're devious. <laughs> I've seen you fuck with him a lot. You've even tried to fuck with me. Me? Yeah. When? Uh, maybe it was me trying to fuck with you, actually. When? I don't know. Like, <laughs> I, feel, I feel like we don't talk that much. Oh yeah, she We're, said this like, by the way. Compared compared to how much like I t my relationship with David and Omar. Or, like obviously Mike. Me and me and Omar are starting to get a little closer. <laughs> his, name's, ugh, his name's Andre. She calls him Omar. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, shit. what's going on? Why are you? Why are you guys not like? I need you to be the closest with her. You're gonna be the best man. That is when weird. We get our sixty percent guaranteed. Wait, much. are you sure? We don't talk that much. Are you sure? David, have David do it instead. I mean, he's my wait, best wait, friend. Wait. I I hug Dave multiple times a day. I don't think I've ever given you a hug. I don't. I like to hug my boys, <laughs> girls. Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, he, he probably likes that. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't. I don't. I mean, you guys can. Yeah, do a hug and, if until you want. we're in the kitchen at two a.m. and you no, freak out. No, I, I just because I just had, had like my issues in the past with like that, so I'm like way yeah. hands on yeah, my boys. Yeah. But like, uh, I think it's, I, I don't know actually. That's a good point that you've made. Also, you might just <laughs> you you might also just be a little more introverted. I really than, like, am, and I'm also introverted, and I've had this problem yeah. with other introverted people, where like. I won't interact with them because they don't yeah, interact with so me. Yeah, so weird. And that might like, be it. Yeah. I and after this podcast ends, we're going to be sitting like, like across the room like so, this. Hey. It's uh, like on our phone. <laughs> <laughs> now, what's the name of uh, a person who's an introvert and an extrovert? Because I think that's me. An ambivert? Dex because Dex because in many ways, like, and my ex told me this. She goes, "You know, you're an introvert, right?" And I was like, "What do you mean?" She's like, "You like don't leave your house. You don't like, like talking to new people." And yeah, in many ways, it's true, but in many ways, it's fucking not. Like I'll, I'll be the person at the grocery store. I mean, you guys take trips with me talking to like everyone. But were you but, were you naturally like that, or did you have to grow that? No, I've always I've, I've always been outgoing. 
Oh, you have? I've always been outgoing. I just like, I think I'm really comfortable with the people I do have around me. And like, I don't know, you're still like semi new, right? So I don't yeah. know if I've made as much of an effort as I probably should have now that you guys are especially getting like serious to uh, learn everything about you. How do, where do I, I start? Mean, I don't think you need to know everything about me. Well, then what do you want from me, Amara? <laughs> I don't know. It's just, I was just pointing it out, but. It's, I mean, I don't have like an objection towards it. I mean, it's that's fine. so weird. I'm always with you guys too, but we're just talking about nonsense. Well, I mean, we're yeah. all just, we're all just completely, <clears throat> you know, entangled in our own lives. Like, like, think about it. Like, she sees David. I mean, He's it, it David's be, usually just moping. Of, David's usually just moping around. I thought about that. You as know what an I'm excuse, saying? And but she's, also, that's not even like. We're shooting a, a yeah, but amount. there's a lot of times he's not shooting. You're working on at the n- computer here. You're, uh, you're 24 seven. When David's not shooting, he's in mope mode. He's a fucking <laughs> mope. mope. He doesn't work out. He doesn't do anything besides mope. He, he loves he's moping. Always, he's always just there. Like we're just if like he was close to any out, kind of automobile, it would be a moped. And David's just sitting right there. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. No, no, shoot, that's yeah. true. That's true. Yeah, that's the sharp. best. That's the best. If I could, I would leave the house immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Now, now you wouldn't. This is the safest place to be. You ever going to shoot porn again? Didn't you? <laughs> already he asked me. That? Sorry, I don't know why I feel like I'm just double checking. Guys, we... Uh, no, babe, I'm not. We might... Hit two million subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> we might uh, We might be done. I feel like... Uh, that, that was a lot. Yeah. That was a lot. We heated up. We heated up during the second half. Uh, it was great. So, it was just stra- it's stra- Like I said, it's just strange, like, balancing objectivity... Like feelings for each other. Check it out. Check check it out. So it's tricky. So business, friendship, relationship, (laughs) gotta be gotta be respectful (laughs) while getting content. This is this this dynamic's weird. Yeah, it is weird. Yeah, if you watch this and it didn't seem like it flowed like normal, we're all just like kind of walking, like carefully. And I I literally like suck at like these like interview podcast style things. Like I'm so bad at it. Um, um, (laughs) do you think you suck at it because you think you suck at it? Oh. Something I don't know. To, For some reason, it's just like whenever I sit down, like to do something like this, I just get like really bad anxiety, and mm. I'm so bad at talking whenever I have anxiety. I'm actually glad you came because we talked about having you on much earlier, but I'm glad we brought you on now that you, especially, are this involved and you know all of us a little more, and this is yeah. like a semi comfortable environment if I came at least. On and I was just like, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Because we talked about having you on like like six months ago, before you guys even met, before any of the vlog shit. Honestly, like I probably wouldn't have came because like what you were talking about, like I hate also hate doing like interviews and stuff mm. because people only want to ask me about sure. porn and like sexualize me the whole time. It's just like I don't want to talk about that. For sure. For sure. Yeah. You know what the cure is for anxiety on the set? What? Doing 170 episodes. Because let me tell you, when I sat <laughs> in that seat for episode one, I ran off and c- cried. Really? Well, I didn't cry, but it was really sweaty. <laughs> my hands are sweaty that's all right so are evans that was a, <laughs> that was a great episode lana thanks for coming on where can they follow, find you on instagram just my name guys what about only fans do you want to do you want to plug that no, like okay. are you it's sure okay. it's fine all right well guys lana Rhodes on instagram thank you for joining us for this episode of impulsive hit that subscribe button we love you guys and we'll see you next that was the best i got i'm sorry <laughs>